policy for the National Farmers Union in collaboration with NFU members, the author's brief and articles that analyze and critique laws, programs, and policies relevant to agriculture, farming, and rural life. Proposing alternatives that advance food sovereignty and agroecology, she has been advocating for sustainable and just farm policy since the early 1990s. With a particular focus on seed issues, she was able, or she was a key organizer in the Saskatchewan class action suit against Monsanto and Bayer to stop GMO wheat and make them liable for GMO canola contamination of organic farms in the early 2000s. She co-edited Beyond Factory Farming, Corporate Hog Barns, and the Threat to Public Health, the Environment and Rural Communities, and her 1998 master's thesis was a political biography of Annie Hollis, a leader in the prairie farm organizations that preceded the NFU. Since 2008, she and her partner have operated a certified organic farm near Mont Nebo, Saskatchewan. Over to you, Kathy. Thank you. Thanks very much, Coral. It's so great to be here and uh, be part of this uh, convention with everybody in person and online. All right. So, seed is powerful. Seed is fundamental to our livelihoods, identity, culture, and autonomy. Each seed embodies both the past and future. It contains the heritage of all past breeding and the potential for future crops and progeny that will carry its genetic material into the future. Oops. Okay. Um, for corporations, the ability to control seed, the foundation of agricultural production, uh, would give them immense power and, and untold wealth to their shareholders. The interests of farmers and seed corporations are opposite. For us, Seed produces abundance, it holds the promise of future crops, it renews itself every harvest. By saving, exchanging and planting seed, we safeguard our livelihoods, our autonomy and our dignity. But corporations see these qualities as problems. Here is a product that reproduces itself. It is not only alive, but it produces abundantly. A small quantity can be saved for future planting and harvest. The very qualities of seed that make it valuable to farmers is what corporations aim to control and limit so that they can use it to make more money. This is why seed is the site of power struggle. Okay. If seed companies can control access to seed, they will make more money. Corporate concentration allows companies to use their wealth and power to increase their control. And the more control they have over seed, the easier it is for the largest companies to expand and reach even farther. Control of seed is both a method and an outcome of corporate concentration. Um, as Kavya said, just six companies control nearly 60% of the seed market. And the, the four biggest ones are Bayer, Corteva, BASF, and Syngenta. They have achieved this dominance through very deliberate strategies operating on many levels, including merger and acquisition of smaller companies and influencing the terms of trade agreements. I won't go into detail about those processes today as they are typical of all large corporations. I will focus on the dynamics that are particular to seed. What we see playing out in the arena of seed is the process of enclosure turning something that is held in common and governed by communities into forms of private property that can then be used to transfer wealth from seed users to seed owners. Seed companies gain control in two main ways, biologically and through legal restrictions. With genetic engineering, biological and legal mechanisms of control are combined. The biological restrictions are hybrids and terminator technology. Hybridization produces seed, oops, <laughs> produces, uh, uh, produces seed with desired characteristics by ensuring pollination only occurs between one variety of female plant and another variety of male plant. 
However, because seed saved from hybrid plants results in an inconsistent crop, farm saved seed is not useful. Pioneer, the first company to develop and sell hybrid seed, hybrid corn seed annually, has become one of the most powerful seed companies in the world, Corteva. Terminator technology genetically engineers seed so that only crops treated with the company's product can produce viable seed. This allows the technology's owners to control germination. When companies tried to get it approved, people were outraged and farmers around the world, including us in the NFU, stood up and organized, demanding a moratorium on Terminator technology. In 2006, the campaign was successful and a moratorium was established at the UN Convention on Biodiversity, which still holds. The legal restrictions are plant breeders' rights and patents. Plant breeders' rights is a form of intellectual property that applies to new varieties of plants. It restricts farmers from freely using the biological reality of seed that it can reproduce and evolve without human intervention. Countries can create PBRs by plus passing a law that allows companies to sue farmers if they use seed enrolled in the PBR system without permission or without paying a royalty. PBRs create a revenue stream for seed companies that develop and claim ownership of new plant varieties. UPOV is an organization that develops and promotes model PBR laws that countries can pass. There are two main versions of PBR now, UPOV 78 and UPOV 91. Canada passed a version of the UPOV 78 PBR law in 1990, and in 2015, under the Harper government, Canada passed a UPOV 91 law. UPOV 78 gives the plant breeder exclusive rights to sell the variety for 18 years, but farmers retain the right to use farm saved seed after their initial purchase. UPOV 91 gives the plant breeder exclusive rights to plant, store, condition and sell the variety for 20 years with a farmer's privilege, allowing farmers to save seed to plant on their own farms. UPOV 91 shifts the farmer's right to save seed to a privilege that in Canada can easily be restricted or removed by changing one regulation. Patents are an older form of intellectual property that give inventors exclusive rights to sell their invention for a period of time in return for disclosing how to make the invention. The knowledge becomes public and for a defined period, the financial benefit is enjoyed by the inventor. The legitimacy of, of uh, pa patenting uh, plants is very controversial and each country has their own interpretation of whether or how patents apply to pl plants. In Canada, the Supreme Court ruled that patents on higher organisms like plants and animals are not allowed, but it is possible to patent gene sequences used in genetic engineering. Combining biological and legal measures, biotechnology and patents, a seed company can get exclusive rights to the plant, including its seed, for 20 years. There is no seed saving allowed under patent law. When using GM seed, the farmer must purchase seed every year. In the Percy Schmeiser case in 2004, the Supreme Court ruled that no matter how Monsanto's patented genetic sequence got into his canola field, its presence without Monsanto's permission was illegal. From then on, farmers have been very reluctant to plant non-GM canola in case their seed is contaminated with GM seed, making them vulnerable to lawsuits. This is a factor in the near 100% adoption of GM canola in Canada. And having a virtual monopoly allows patent holders to raise seed prices to what the market will bear. Patented GM canola seed is now a huge source of revenue and power for Bayer and BASF. Corteva, Bayer and Syngenta either hold the patents or have the licenses to the patents for gene editing techniques. They will use these patents to claim patent rights over gene edited plants using genetic scissors to cut DNA and then force the cell to make repairs in ways that 
overcome the cell's mechanisms that protect against damaging mutations. The genetic scissors can be removed after making changes to the genome, resulting in a cell with significant genetic changes but no foreign DNA. Seed companies are pushing to exempt these gene edited seed from regulation by claiming the absence of foreign DNA makes them equivalent to conventionally bred plants and thus safe. Yet patent rights are based on the concept of invention, a reward for creating something new. Gene editing technology can be applied to all types of crop, vastly increasing the scope of patenting. We could see patented gene edited cereal, pulse and vegetable crops come onto the market if companies decide to develop them. But our government does have contravailing power. The need for seed regulation has been recognized since 1923 when Canada's first seed act was reg and regulations were passed. Uh, these rules are designed to protect farmers from fraud and ensure seed meets quality standards and to protect Canadian agriculture from plant diseases. A public interest seed regulatory system developed over the following decades. Key features are variety registration, grade tables, transparency, inspection, record keeping, government authority, uh, pedigreed seed that's certified with strict quality control standards, and common seed which is produced and exchanged between farmers. In, in, 2000, oops, oh, there we go. in 2002, Canada ratified the United Nations International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. As a signatory to this treaty, Canada recognizes the enormous contribution made by local and indigenous communities and farmers of all regions of the world, promises to conserve crop diversity, and agrees not to limit farmers' rights to save, use, exchange, and sell farm seed, seed and propagating material. In spite of this history and these commitments, the federal government has started a major review of our seed reg regulations at the request of the seed lobby and the corporate-led agri-food economic strategy table. In winter 2021, the CFIA did a needs assessment of surveys, survey of farmers and others in the seed system to gauge support for change. The results show that farmers are generally happy with the system as it is, and only the seed corporations want radical changes. The seed lobby groups Crop Life Canada, Seeds Canada, and Grains Council of Canada want Canada's rules changed to limit farmers' choices, reduce transparency, lower or eliminate quality standards, remove access to older varieties where patent rights or patent plant breeders' rights have expired, increase surveillance of farmers, and increase costs for farmers and independent seed growers. These changes would drastically increase corporate control over seed, adding to farmers' costs and weakening farmer autonomy. The increased revenue and power of these changes would provide seed companies that these changes would provide to seed companies would also help them displace public plant breeding, another corporate concentration goal. Public plant breeding is supported by farmers and government through AAFC research stations, the National Seed Bank, Western Grains Research Foundation, universities and Crop, Com Crop Commission investment in public breeding. In 2020, Sask a Sask wheat study uh, uh, econ economists calculated that for every dollar invested in public wheat breeding, nearly $35 in value is returned to farmers directly and, an addi and additional value is delivered to Canada's food system and, and, beyond, and our export customers. The seed corporations seek to privatize this benefit. They want to capture these returns to enhance their own power and benefit their shareholders. And private plant breeding doesn't just aim to increase revenues from the seed alone. The same companies are input sellers and will use seed as a platform to increase sales for seed treatments, fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. They are not interested in breeding for insect and disease resistance or weed competitiveness. This would cut into their input sales. Seed companies are also looking to reduce their costs. 
Seeds Canada is pushing to get seed industry control over our variety registration system, which requires new varieties to be proven to perform well in Canadian growing conditions. If they can weaken or even eliminate variety registration, they could abandon Canadian breeding programs altogether and just provide seed bread for larger markets such as the US and Europe. We are also concerned about the influence of neoliberal ideology that equates uh, public interest with shrinking government oversight and promoting the success of large corporations. Making Canada attractive to global corporations is a high priority and GDP growth is the key performance indicator, while worsening inequality, social unrest and ecological de deterioration are ignored. This way of thinking is susceptible to regulatory capture. When regula regulators develop close relationships with the company lobbyists to the point that they see their role as serving and facilitating the companies instead of protecting the public. In January 2020, Health Canada, a Health Canada industry working group was set up to inform uh, the development of draft guidance for the novel food regulation, focusing on plant breeding in advance of the official consultation. In one of its, and one of its objectives was to eliminate re regulatory burden. CropLife Canada, Canada Grains Council, and the Canadian Seed Trade Association, which is now Seeds Canada, were the only industry representatives. Senior staff from Health Canada, Ag Canada, and CFIA represented government. And in and this September, Radio Canada revealed that the CFIA had circulated a summary of an important regulatory proposal about gene editing by a document that was produced on a computer owned by CropLife Canada. The, propo the proposal would help seed companies by exempting many gene edited varieties from being regulated and would let them onto the market without being disclosed as gene edited. But the NFU has resisted corporate control of seed throughout our history. The power of seed, uh, <laughs> The power of seed means there will always be struggle for control over it, and we have made a difference. In 1989, the NFU campaigned against Canada joining UPOV 78. In 2004, the NFU organized a major pushback against the seed sector review and prevented Canada from adopting a UPOV 91 law that year. From 2013 to 17, we organized against the release of GM alfalfa. In two, 2014, the Harper government introduced UPOV 91 legislation in an omnibus bill. We campaigned hard against that, and while the bill was passed, we achieved an important amendment that ensured farmers could continue using farm-saved seed. In 2018, the NFU organized to oppose the Ag Canada initiative to pave the way for royalty collection on farm saved seed and, and farmer opposition to endpoint royalties and trailing contracts was so strong that the government made a full retreat. Since 2021, we've been pushing back against the deregulation of gene edited seed and we are involved in the seed regulatory modernization process with NFU members participating in the task teams set up to inform the CIA inform the recommendations the CFIA will use when drafting amendments to the seed regulations. Inequality increases when the powerful are given more power. Those that have will take more if we let them. But if we fight back, we can win. So I've uh, put some uh, envelopes and uh, letters on, on your table uh, that you can uh, use to send a letter to Minister Bibo, including a little uh, um, let, uh, envelopes about uh, gene editing that you might like to enclose and we encourage you to read the uh, NFU fact sheets about the uh, our seed regulations that we have they're on the table by the, the door and um, and if you are interested in this, these issues you're welcome to join our seed sovereignty committee so thanks very much Thanks, Kathy.